Hello everyone, and welcome to part 22 of the Learn Trigonometry series. Today I'm going to be talking about the sort of extension on the identity as I talked about in the previous segment. And obviously this video will not make as much sense if you do not watch the previous segment because I'm building on the proof from the last time. And basically, using the proof that I did, we found that sine a plus b is equal to sine a cos b minus sine b cos a. And you do not need to memorize this formula, like, because it, these formulas will be provided to you if you need it during the exam. Like, it's often like they just say it at the beginning of a question, and then they give you the question. And it's kind of a sign that you need to use this formula to solve the question. But then it's also available in the formula sheet that comes with every exam. So like I said, no need to memorize it, but it, it can be useful. So you have sine a plus b is sine a cos b minus sine b cos a. And then cos a plus b, you have cos a cos b minus sine a cos, I mean, sine a sine b. Now, our goal today is to find identities for sine a minus b cos a minus b and tan a plus or minus b because using these two you can figure out this one and i'll just leave that open leave that hanging for you guys to think about how we're going to go about doing this but first i'm going to establish some things about the sine and cosine functions so obviously using minus b instead of plus b um, the first thing that comes to mind is substituting minus b into these expressions. So it would be like sine a cos minus b minus sine minus b cos a. So I want to establish some things about the sine and cosine functions. If you're in an American school, you might have heard about odd and even functions, but that's not really an idea that gets discussed a lot here. But then basically the gist of the idea is that since the cosine wave is symmetric around the y-axis, so that for any x, if you take the cosine of negative x, it will be absolutely the same. So one key thing is that cos x is equal to cos negative x. And furthermore, the sine wave, you have the axes here. The sine wave goes like this. And it also goes like this in the opposite direction. It's a repeating wave. And the thing is, if you have a certain x here, and then you take it to the other side, you will find that it's actually the case that when you have any x and then you take the sine of negative x, you will get the negative of sine x. And like, that's because it's kind of rotationally symmetrical. If you rotated this graph 180 degrees uh, around the origin, you'd get the same graph. And that's what it means for this to be sort of an odd or even function. Like this is an odd function because you rotate it. This is an even function because you can reflect it. And that's, that's not something you need to know, but it's just terminology used to describe this kind of relationship. So we know that co cosine x is equal to cosine minus x. So when we're substituting in our minus b's, we can just say that they're cosine b. And then we have sine x is equal to negative sine negative x. Like you can try this for yourself if you want. Like if you, t if you have sine of negative 30 degrees, you get negative a half. And the negative of that is positive a half which is sine of positive 30 degrees. And this relation to chip holds true for all x. Same for this one. So I'm gonna start by substituting minus b into b in order to find sine a minus b. And basically we get sine a minus b is sine a cos minus b
and then minus sine minus b cos a. And how can we turn this into cos b's and sine b's? Well, cos b is the same as cos minus b, so we just have sine a cos b remains the first term. And the this side here, we have minus sine minus b is of course going to become sine b. So we have plus sine b cos a. And you may notice that this actually looks quite familiar to the original expression. So we have sine a cos b minus sine b cos a, and here there's a plus sign. So the way this is actually written out in terminology, you have sine a plus or minus b is equal to sine a cos b plus or minus sine b cos a. And the the sort of order in which these plus and minus signs are written is actually quite important. So like if you take the top one, the plus, then you also have to take the top one here, the plus. And like that's why we also have a minus plus sign that we use in the cosine one that I'm about to explain. So if we want to get cosine a minus b, we have cos a cos minus b minus sine a sine minus b. And of course, this goes to cos a cos b because cos negative b is the same as cos b. And then minus sine a sine minus b. And sine minus b is equal to minus sine b. So this minus multiplies with this minus to get us cos a cos b plus sine a sine b. So when you're, take, when you're taking a minus sign here, you get a plus sign here. And so the way we write it out is cosine a plus or minus b goes to cos a cos b minus plus sine a sine b. And this is simply because we, if we want to take one case of this, we just have to take the top side, all the top side, so cos a plus b, da da da, minus, or we can take the bottom side and cos a minus b is cos a cos b plus sine a sine b, because sine is on the bottom side here. And that's how these plus and minus signs work, especially in identities like this. So using this information, we are going to try and find tan a plus or minus b. That's just an extra challenge. And if you want, stop watching the video, pause the video, just try and do this yourself and think about how you would actually do this. If you still don't know how we would do this, I'm going to give you the hint that tan a plus b would actually be equivalent to sine a plus or minus b over cos a plus or minus b because of the identity that tan theta is sine theta over cos theta. If you're still watching the video, I'm going to work through this using the expressions we have here. So expanding both of these out, we get sine a cos b plus or minus sine b cos a. And this is all divided by cos a cos b minus plus sine a sine b. Now, just going to have a think about what we can actually do with this expression first off. Well, one thing that comes to mind is that we can sort of split this expression into two, or actually no. If we split the expression into two, we'll be left with just one side of the fraction over the whole denominator, and then the other side of the fraction over the whole denominator. 
but in actual honesty, I can't think that that would actually help us. So I'm thinking maybe we divide both sides or multiply both sides by some sine b or cos a. All right, so let's let's try and divide both sides by cos b and see where it goes. We have sine a plus or minus sine b over cos b cos a divided by cos a minus plus sine a sine b over cos b. And the reason I'm writing sine the, the cos b's over the sine b's where they don't cancel out is because I'm going to turn them into tan b's, like because of the original identity that sine b over cos b is tangent b. And I think by continuing with this form, we can sort of eliminate the last few bits in order to get our expression perhaps in terms of tangent. So while this would work, I think we can find an expression in terms of tangent because from this step to this step, we've divided by cos b. And since um, if we were to divide by cos a at this point, the remainder stuff will be eliminated and this stuff will turn into tangents. So yep, I'm gonna do this now. I'm gonna turn it into cos a. I'm gonna divide by cos a and then turn it into solely being made out of tangent terms. But then firstly, I'm going to change these into tangent b and write it out so it's clearer for you. Sine a plus or minus tan b cos a over cos a minus plus sine a tan b is equal to this is bad practice, by the way. I've just gotten in an awful habit of using arrows, arrows instead of equal sign. Don't ever do this. Seriously, don't ever do this. You can only do this when you're making some sign of uh, logical uh, deduction, like when you're getting the equation of a line, and you'd be like, arrow L equals, or rather, L. Anyways, it, it's bad practice. Don't use it. You would, you would find it in in the Cartesian coordinate questions where you'd go like the line L is of the equation y equals mx plus c. Like you would use it like that, but don't don't ever use it normally. Use the equal sign. Sine a plus or minus tan b cos a divided by cos a plus or minus tan, sine a tan b is tan a plus or minus b. And to simplify this further, we're going to divide both sides by cosine a. Like both sides, I mean the numerator and the denominator, if I wasn't clear before. So you have sine a over cosine a plus or minus tan b because the cosine a was eliminated, divided by 1 because the cosine a was eliminated, minus plus sine a over cosine a tan b. And of course, you can see the next step in this process is to just turn these sine a over cos a terms into tangent a terms. So you have tan a plus or minus tan b divided by 1 minus plus tan a tan b. And this is our final answer for what tan a plus or minus b is. And again, don't worry about this. They will give you this identity in the formula sheet. And if you ever need to use it in a question, they will also give you this identity at the beginning of the question. And the only question I can think of where you need to use this exact identity, I've seen one single question so far where they asked you to prove that um, the tangent of three theta was something, basically. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video, even though it was a bit long-winded. And next time I'll be talking about techniques to solve the kind of trigonometric equations that they'll give you in the real exam. All right, thanks for watching.